Hi everyone, this is Jeff from Railway City Hobbies and what we have today is scale the scale trains edition of the uh, GE Tier 4 Jivo. This is CN number 3045. This one comes equipped with the angled uh, exhaust uh, compartment. So without further ado, we'll go over some of the detail. On the front, we have the uh, standard plow with uh, three MU hoses on the other side. Plus you have the train line hose here. And then you got your uh, another MU hose here the in the boot. You have LED ditch lights on the other side and the red DP light at the top your coupler cut lever here and here you know when you get around to the back you'll notice that the plow is different illuminated uh, number boards on the other side black framed windows with uh, black windshield wipers on either side and a white separately applied grab iron above the uh, above the window individually applied grab irons around the sand uh, filling hatches on either side two small grabs up on the top of the nose of this uh, locomotive grab irons going down the front of the locomotive You'll see it later in this video, the actual walkway treads of the uh, steps going up are actually see-through. Okay, Louvers on the uh, battery door. Lots of decaline, uh, finely printed labeling all on the locomotive, a lot on the actual sill, around the sill stripe, warning labels and uh, information labels, builder's plate. Sight glass on the fuel tank. Filler neck, and I believe that would be the emergency shutoff. Your uh, bell right here. See-through grill work, see-through grill rail, uh, grill work. In the uh, rad fans, or sorry, the rad fans, but the rad grills. Lots of uh, detail on the doors, warning labels, and uh, etc. Uh, nice, nice looking air intakes on the front here. On the rear. As you see, it's a different plow. It's a rock plow in the rear. So the MU hose is tucked in behind uh, the, on either side. And the train line does not. Ditch lights and the red DPU light on the top. Sand filling hatch. And also a more grill work on the rear on either side. You have the CN logo and the uh, number of the locomotive on the rear wing of the radiator um, oh, sorry um, before I go, go to the side also the spare knuckle cut, uh, holders here and here on the other side so around the side here got the air tanks here and here Um, on this side here, you got uh, the, they all have rotating uh, bearing trucks. Actually, I'm going to flip back to the other side quickly. I missed a piece of detail on the other side. The brake chain on this uh, t uh, scale trains is plastic, it is not metal. So back to where we're going. Oops. Not on the track either. Mm -hmm. 
So there's lots of detail underneath. We'll flip it over uh, on the other side so you can see a little bit better. But you can see the air cylinders here and here, the brake cylinders up there. More labeling uh, on the uh, doors of the uh, locomotive. And again, see through row work at the rear. I'll just move it away so you can actually literally see right through. <clears throat> and double louvered battery doors up here. So now we're going to tip it up to the top so we can look at the top of it. Put this on the side. Okay. So you got your grills on the rear here for the radiator. This is your uh, exhaust uh, port. So the the housing here is angled. Uh, the earlier ones, uh, for the previous production, like um, in 2015, they were square, and then uh, after. Uh, 3044 I believe it was, they went to the angled housing and haven't changed back. Your five chime horn, your labels uh, on top of the um, removable compartments for to get into the uh, air intake, your um, antennae uh, or GPS dome, Actually, I'm not entirely sure. I believe that that's the GPS dome and that's your antennae. Somebody's going to correct me on that. A little grab iron there, here, and the grab iron above the cab here. Oops, you can't even see it. Grab iron right there. Underneath. You can see a lot of detail running back and forth, the electrical conduit running around, back and forth in the locomotive. So with that, uh, we just did a basic uh, run around. Actually, I'm going to stop that for a second. There's another D CN only detail on this one. The walkways on the CN tier fours. Uh, these are great, uh, represent the greats, because uh, the prototype, uh, the walkways were open to be uh, open below, so uh, the snow would actually fall through the walkway instead of piling up and becoming an issue for the crew. So. Next we're going to uh, get the uh, computer set up and we're going to uh, look at the lighting features with this locomotive uh, and the sound features as well. We'll do a slow run by in front of the camera so you can see very well all the detail up close and personal. We're going to take the layout and do a little bit of running so you can hear it, uh, hear it run and see it run. We'll do a push-pull test and uh, weigh it later. So we got a lot to get through. We'll be right back. All right, so now we have it set, uh, uh, hooked on the computer, and we can start going through the sound and lighting options with this locomotive. So we'll first start with the lighting options. So we'll turn on the uh, headlight here with F0. Uh, the dimmer is F12. Then the ditch lights are F6. Now the DPU light uh, is uh, works with F5. When in DPU mode, uh, the headlight uh, is not uh, functioning, does not function on either direction. So as soon as I turn on the DPU light feature, it uh, will shut off the dish lights and the headlights on its own. Uh, in this case, uh, we won't even see the red light turn on because the red light will uh, turn on in on the back of the locomotive. So we'll 
turn it on so now the lights go out and now I'll put the locomotive uh, so it would be traversing theoretically going uh, long hood forward and now the red DP light is on and so this will change with the direction of the locomotive and as soon as I turn the DP light off headlight and ditch light come on together uh, with uh, locomotives um, Norfolk Southern, BNSF uh, when you sound the horn the ditch lights will flash uh, alternate uh, with that uh, there isn't too much in the lighting features so we'll start up the locomotive with F8 So now we're at idle, we're going to sound the bell with F1. Now the horn, uh, there are six horn, uh, sorry, 16 horns on this. And this one is uh, set directly to the uh, right locomotive. So the uh, horn for this. We'll also sound the bell as well. F4 is the dynamic brake, which we can't test while well, it's stationary. What we can do is we can engage the drive hold and we can notch it up. So at idle, it's in notch one. So here we are, notch one. Go on to notch two. Go right to the compressor. Notch three. Notch four. Mark six. Just now stop again. I got be seven. And that's not cheap. So we'll iron this down. Alright, now that compressor stopped there. So now we're back at idle. 
This uh, locomotive, uh, Notch 8 didn't kick in until Speed Step uh, 69. Because it's a version 4 uh, locks down decoder, you do have the ability to adjust where your notches actually are on this locomotive. Another interesting feature is it's got to keep alive. So you have to leave it on track power for just a, a couple of moments uh, so it builds up the capacitor, gets uh, some energy in it so it can continuously run. Um, this obviously doesn't uh, replace cleaning your track, but it's a nice, uh, a nice feature that uh, you could use um, when you're running on a friend's layout or you do have a dirty piece of track. So we're gonna... Uh, Shut it down. Another thing F12 does, as well as a dimmer, it turns out the ditch lights as well. So uh, in dim mode, it, it automatically turns the ditch lights off, and when you turn it off, uh, like uh, disengage F12, the uh, pilot light goes uh, to normal brightness, and the ditch lights come back on. So with that, uh, we're going to um, do some slow runbys, and then uh, we're going to weigh it in and do a pull test. So. Um, We'll be right back.
Alright, so we have the uh, push-pull test set up. So we'll start off with the pull. And we're going to use the uh, scale trains tier 4 for this. So on the first pull we get... One hundred. Second test. One fifteen. One twenty. And holding at one twenty. And third test. Right to 115, 120. Okay, we're gonna throw that first one out. I don't know what, why that first one was an oddball one. And one more just to confirm the three. Another 115, another 120. This behemoth can pull. 125. And uh, I'm just sitting here at speed step three. She's still trying to pull at one, uh, 130, 125. Yeah, she likes to pull. And we'll flip it around. I love that keep of life. Okay, make sure all the wheels back on. And get the coupler lined up. Okay. First push. One fifteen. One twenty. Take the uh, tension off. Next set. 115, 120, somewhere in the middle. And one more. You can definitely push 115. So in comparison, that's uh, 10 grams more than the Intermountain and 20 grams more than a Cato uh, SD90 Mac. This is that. This is just ridiculous, to be honest with you. Um, I had my doubts to think that scale trains. Uh, when I first did the Intermountain, I, I thought it may be hard to top that, but they topped it. So. Uh, We'll get this on a scale and see how much this uh, behemoth weighs. It's got to weigh more than the uh, Intermountain 20, at 25 grams because uh, she's got a lot of pulling effort. So we'll be right back. All right, so we're at the point right now where we're going to weigh this locomotive. So let's put her on the scale. This locomotive weighs 26 ounces which is a full ounce heavier than the Intermountain version which could explain the extra traction effort. Uh, we've reached the end of the review. Um, we probably won't get to doing a comparison this week um, simply because I'm still doing packing, receiving, and uh, shipping uh, these out and also uh, the Greater Toronto uh, Model Train Show is on this weekend, the uh, 30th, and, uh, 30th of uh, September and the 1st of October, Saturday, Sunday, and so Friday I will be packing for the show, 
and today being Wednesday night I probably won't have enough time to do a comparison video but uh, initial personal thoughts on this I believe scale trains just for the fact it's got the keep alive it's heavier and uh, it runs really smooth uh, as you've seen when I was doing the uh, pass in front that was speed step one it is nice and smooth uh, running locomotive also out pulls the inner mountain um, both in the push and pull test but uh, we'll leave all the comparison uh, information uh, and we'll uh, we're gonna do a in-depth comparison uh, side by side comparison with the inner mountain at another time thank you for watching happy modeling